Hi there, we're still rolling right here on Breakfast Central on News Central on this fine Wednesday. Yes, the uh, 12th day of February 2020. Let's go straight now to a bit of Wellness Wednesday, if you may, all about uh, school environments. Now, we know that uh, the school environment is increasingly exposed to uh, multi layers of safety issues, including but not limited to the presence of you know, youth gangs, violence, illegal you know, drug use and child abuse, uh, kidnapping and potentially fatal accidents too. Now, case in point is the stampede, unfortunately one which happened in uh, a Kenyan school not quite long ago, where tens of uh, children, you know, died. And I should add that till now there's been no reports of uh, the causes of it still. And we make many demands on the institutions that provide certain services to us and demanding that our schools are safe for our children uh, in uh, quite an entitlement, you have to say. So what measures should be taken uh, to ensure we build a safe school? And uh, well, back for us in the studio to discuss all of this is Ugochi herself, uh, Safe from Safety Clinic. Ugochi Obidiego, welcome. Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast Central. Much. Now, we're talking about uh, safety when it comes to school environment. Uh, I'll, I'll talk, what are the implications of an on, on, on safe learning environment for any academic people? Okay, so it could lead to behavioral and academic challenges for the child. Okay. So because once an environment, once the school environment is unsafe, mm. there could be physical injuries, mental issues, you know. So it's just best that as much as possible the environment is safe. Because the truth is if the place is unsafe, the children mm. won't be able to concentrate on their academics because they're worried about or maybe bullying mm. or worried about getting injured and other related issues. Mm. Uh, if you were to... You're quite busy with schools you and, uh, yes. on a daily, and uh, you've seen many schools across West Africa, Nigeria, Lagos, to be precise. What would you say has been the biggest safety challenge in terms of environment uh, for these schools here? Okay, so we've had cases of lots of injuries happening within the school. Then there have also been cases of um, accidents, school bus accidents. There have been cases of, um, of um, kidnap, you know, from schools. Yes, and um, <sighs> these are... Um, some challenges and mm. I think also there is a gap in knowledge okay you know what sort of gap what sort of knowledge okay so we find that um, a lot of educators not really know so much about school safety and well that you can be understandable teachers and the, yes teachers okay. that can be understandable because when they went to teacher training college what was focused on was on the core of education so okay. that module of you know creating safe schools was not there mm. and so that's why it's important to try to bridge that gap by creating opportunities for them to learn so that they can incorporate it in their schools. Mm. So for the teachers, uh, it's more about the academics and the curriculum and, that, and yes. that's it. So now there's that increased desire for people to know more because of situations that have happened in the country mm. and all around. So there's that consciousness now that, okay, we need to know more about school mm. safety and begin to do something. Thankfully, we've actually had schools that have implemented certain programs. We've had schools that are making sure that safety is one of their priorities, you know, mm. ensuring that their teachers get trained or their teachers are sent to attend capacity development events, you know, so. Mm. Uh, what about, you know, uh, safety and guidance professionals within the schools? Don't these schools, uh, you know, have that? Do they need have to get... like safety officers in yeah. school? Okay, so what we find is mm. that most schools do not have that. There are just a few schools that maybe have an external consultant that comes in from time to time, mm. but most schools do not have an in-house safety officer. If at all mm. there are schools that have, it's just a really limited number. Mm. You know, but there is really, for the bulk of schools, we don't really have that function. Or is maybe. it left to one teacher? One, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, sometimes we find <laughs> that um, that happens, um, you know. So what we, we, sometimes what safety professionals advocate to um, schools is that, okay, so if your operations is really small and you cannot employ a full-time safety officer, mm. you can actually delegate a teacher to do this. All you would need to do is ensure that that teacher gets trained. You know, make sure that teacher is sent for certain training so that that teacher can learn mm. and come to school and help mm. ensure it's incorporated. Uh, you, you talked about some of the health safety concerns uh, in, that you do most of you in schools, like injuries, yes, uh, injuries, accidents, you know, how severe are these? Okay, so we've actually had cases in schools where safety issues led to deaths of children. For example, when there was... Um, a sort of disease outbreak in a school mm. and then children died and then of mm. course um, last week again we had a case where um, a water tank fell into a school and some children died you know <laughs> you know so um, that's, that's huge 
Yes, so these things actually happen. You know, most times people just wait until when a story breaks out on social media or in the news and people are like, oh, this is actually a serious issue. But you know, if from the beginning we begin to put certain things in place, if every school has a school safety management system, to a large extent, this thing will be greatly reduced because we, we should no longer be reactive on matters concerning safety. We should be proactive, make the plans ahead so that if something were to actually happen, you have system in place to mitigate it. Well, is it down to negligence? What about the school proprietors, the school regular? What about you know the education boards? Don't they, and they the ones who are supposed to actually take up take up this school safety? Because it looks like if the academics now has to take the back burner and safety comes to the front burner. Comes to the front. Well, safety is actually supposed to be a component that should be integrated across all schools. What I find is that here in Lagos we have the Lagos State Safety Commission, which is doing an amazing job of you know going from time to time visiting schools and checking that things are fine. But in other states, we do not really have commissions like that. Mm. So sometimes it's left to the discretion of the school owner. And maybe if there is some safety professionals there that just feel, oh, we need to handle this, and mm. then they begin to do something about it. But this is actually something that should come from the top. So from the top, the Ministry of Education itself, it should be enforced that this must be a necessary component of education in this country. Very necessary from the school owners to the teachers to the students, the whole school system, it must be incorporated into it. All right, you talk about incorporation. What about the students uh, uh, for your programs uh, for health and safety? So what kind of training goes to the, uh, for the uh, pupils now in terms of uh, safety? Okay, the so the students themselves need to be taught across different areas. Okay. But you see, for the student to even be taught, the school itself has to have its own policy, its own standard operating procedures, okay. because it is what you have that will be used to teach students in your school. Mm. So um, I, I always say that you cannot do a copy and paste thing. For example, mm. if your school is a bungalow, your safety policy and procedures be totally different from a three-story building mm -hmm. school, you see. Yeah. So it's very important that depending on your own context, you are now creating something for the children to learn. So for instance, mm. um, in the case of um, the, the stampede that happened in Kenya, yeah. they say it was because of children were running down the stairs after school. They were actually just going home after school and then people started running and you know when, when people run what it connotes to someone who doesn't understand why the running is happening is that there is danger. Mm, chaos. And so people, yeah, so others begin to join. And then somehow it now becomes a kind of a survival of the fittest mm. thing because people now get stepped on and, you know, yes. So it should be that from the beginning, that conversation of do not run on stairs. Do not run when you are not on the playground or you're on the sports field. You have no business running on the corridor. Mm. You have no business running on the stairs. Uh, on the you hallway. Know? Yeah, so when those things are already, you know, a part of communication that happens daily in school, it, the children know, okay, this is what is expected. This is how we are supposed to behave. Mm. Yes. All right. And I suppose uh, you, you also make recommendations. Uh, so do they exist, this uh, teacher, caretaker, guardian trainings for safety for schools? Okay. So what has been happening is some school owners have taken responsibility to mm. organize programs for they are in-house for their staff. So they just okay. invite safety professionals like myself to come in and okay. teach. We've also had cases where... For example, organize the annual school safety summit. So we okay. have school owners school send their safety teachers. summit. Yes, okay. we have it every year. Um, we're having our fourth edition sometime in May. Right. Yes. So sometimes what happens is educate school owners send their teachers to mm. attend so that they learn. And then I've also found that because of the increased awareness, most people now when they're organizing programs for educators. Mm. They are now beginning to incorporate a training on safety mm. so that somehow when you attend that event, you learn something about safety, which is a good thing. Yeah, all about cultivating the habits of uh, safe environment for in schools, uh, for also for the kids, uh, also for the teachers too. What, yes. what about uh, the school environment outside and also outside the home too? Okay, so um, talking about outside, Sometimes the environment a school is located the in... The community. Yes, okay. could affect the safety of that school. Mm. If a school is located in an area that is prone to maybe gang violence, mm. or is prone to drugs, or is prone to even flooding, okay, that can be a safety challenge to the school. Mm. And that is why it's important that before a school opens its gates to students, it must do a thorough risk assessment. In a risk assessment, you are basically checking through your environment, identifying the risk that could occur, and then putting in corrective measures so that if something were to happen, you are protected. So for example, I know of a school that every year when it gets flooded in Lagos, for about two weeks or so, school is not in session. Mm. 
Other schools might be in session, but that particular school, you know, because they understand where their school is located. Mm. So they make sure that they do not endanger the lives of So for that period, the children would not be in school. Mm. And then after that, they try to make up for it, you know, ensure that the children have all. Mm. But that's them understanding that, okay, this is my environment can give can put the children at risk mm. and they're doing something about it so that's it every school should observe you know, do a thorough risk assessment see what could go wrong and then put structures in place once every school is able to do that to a really large extent mm. accidents injuries and all that will be totally reduced mm. we may not be able to eliminate totally but we'll be able to reduce as slow as is reasonably practicable mm. and that's what we actually aim for in safety what, what about the ones that don't really concern uh, you know ones that have clearly been man-made yes the flooding environment is different what about the environment the man-made ones you see that's where um, gangs drugs yes that's where having your procedures um, come into place as much as possible you shouldn't even locate a school in such an environment but mm. if this is beyond your country then you need to create yeah, because they are, they are, uh, when I brought, there are schools that are uh, in, in, in the a, middle in you know schools <laughs> yes so you, you need have. to create procedures now when you create procedures it should be communicated to everybody mm. you don't just have your procedures in one document somewhere nobody is even aware that it exists it should be communicated. Let everybody know, okay, because we we are in a location where this and this can happen, mm. these are the steps to take. That is why in the U.S., almost every child in the U.S. has been taught that when there is a shooter in school, there are three things you should be at the top of your mind. Run, hide, fight. Like three words. And everywhere, mm. if you ask about, any child... What about in ducking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you ask any child in the U.S., because they realize that that was one of the major, the highest concern about school safety, mm. active shooter. Right. And so they had to do like a national campaign about it. So you also need to, here, bringing it down to Nigeria, bringing it down to Africa, we need to check in our own schools, what is the highest, the likely risk or the topmost one mm. that is about to affect us or that can affect us. And then we create our own strategy such that if it does happen, we are yeah, ready. Uh, you mentioned things like abuse and uh, uh, kidnapping, you know, part of uh, huge problem uh, and also there's also abuse that goes on you know within school outside school walls and environment that perhaps leads to the homes uh, i'm not sure do you have any programs or does your training uh, in terms of school environment and safety extend to such areas abuse and kidnappings okay so um in my child safety storybook we have chapters that talk about preventing kidnap and also preventing molestation mm. and then whenever I have the opportunity to train the teachers we we'll also talk about it mm. because it's actually very important and we find that the school is an environment that this thing can actually happen in right so it's important that the the children know what to do if they find themselves in a situation like that mm. and it's also important that the teachers are also equipped so that they're able to prevent it so let's talk a little bit about kidnapping if a school has put the right standard operating procedures on how access can be gained into a school. Mm. It already cuts kidnap from happening because the, the security person at the gate already know this is the standard operating procedure for allowing any adult mm. to pick a child from this school. But now when something like that doesn't exist, people begin to use their own initiative at the spur of the moment mm. and that could cause problems. So I remember that there was a... Um, there was a training we did, and one of the case studies, we used the case study of someone coming to school and saying, oh, there was an, emer there's an emergency at home, so the parents have asked him to come and pick up the child. Mm. Meanwhile, the child is actually the child of an influential person, you know. Okay. And then because of that, they opened the gate and they took the child away, okay. and the child was, you know, kidnapped. Mm. But you see, if there is a procedure that before a child is picked up from school from someone other than the parent, mm. these are certain things that need to be done. So for example, I know of a school that if you are going to come and pick up a child from school and for some reason you can't show up yourself, you're sending someone, you're going to send a picture of the person mm. and the person's name. Wow. Yes. So that when that person comes, the school can identify and you can that. You can do that via email. Or? You can do that via email or even WhatsApp. Some schools have actually gone as far as using WhatsApp to ensure that parents don't find it difficult to get mm. in touch with them, okay. which is great. That shows um, foresight. You know, mm. you're trying to be proactive. We don't want a situation of it's only when things happen, we're all being reactive. No, mm. no, no. We need to become more proactive. Wow. Quite a, there's quite a lot to learn. <laughs> and I wish you had more time to really yes. dig deeper into this topic about uh, building safer, safer, safer environment for our schools and you know, students, uh, not just our academic, also for our teachers, about safety first yes. within school environments. Thank you so much, Gunshu Bidigo, for coming from Safe to Check. Well, if you enjoyed watching this video, click here to get more of it. And don't forget to click here to subscribe.